Okay, so basically, um, this is taken out of our 4-H um, sheep resources and the 4-H Alberta multi-judging. So when you listen to the video from Emma and Tori that they created, just some uh, just created a list of the terminology that you might hear in the video so that you can see. So now, on number one, you just wanna look at the overall look of the lamb and that they're balanced, um, you know, their body and height matches and they, they're just a well-balanced, well-looking animal. You don't want um, a short body and super tall legs or super long body and super short legs. You want, you want the overall proportion of that. And um, that just goes right into number two, the size, the scale. So your height, your length, and your width sh should all match the look of the sheep. And then um, the depth and capacity that you will hear um, talked about is the, is the number three point there. And basically that is um, the greater the capacity, uh, the greater the thickness in that area, the uh, more room to hold uh, lambs for the ewes. And then um, number four is the overall length of the body. If you have a nice long bodied sheep, um, you probably have more, um, more ability for um, extra meat cuts in the market side of it. And then, yes. then um, the, levelness of the rump you don't want it to sort of fall off because uh, again that's one of your main cut areas and you just want it to, um, to be nice and muscled and you'll hear you'll see Emma talk about how to how to measure the loin and and the width of the of the animal so that um so I just thought it would be nice to, for the members to be able to see uh, what we were talking about. And then you want the fullness in the leg and the back. You don't want it um, really light, lightly muscled. You, you want, you want to, you should have some extra, extra fat in there. Uh, extra muscle strength is, is good. And then the trimness in the middle um, just goes to the conditioning of the animal. You don't want it uh, um, sagging down. Usually indicates that they're overweight and require a lot of work to get them into show condition and a lot of exercise. And then um, number nine, um, again, it goes back to just looking at the animal, just making sure that their legs are straight, they're, um, they're not um, fallen pasterns and their legs are set apart a bit. They're not, um, they're not knock kneed or that. And then you want their neck, uh, again, in proportion, you want the, you know, depending on the size of your animal, you just want their neck and, and head to be in, in shape, in, in balance. And then again, goes to number 11, the trimness of the breast. Um, same thing with the trimness of the middle. You don't want it, um, you don't want it really bowed out and heavy down in the breast. You want it nice and nice and straight and, and trim. It just makes makes for the makes for the animals balance a bit better. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> what to look for from the front? Okay, I'm just gonna see if I can pull it up here. Yeah. Okay, so. Again, you want the the nice straight straight legs. The um, the head should be in balance with the with the body. Um, you want to be able to to see some breed characteristics along those lines. And for your breed characteristics, if you 
Um, there's a great resource that we usually that we used to get. I'm not sure if if we still get it when you when you um, start in the land project, but we used to get a book from with Alberta 4-H and it would give us um, all the characteristics of all the different um, breeds, which was good. And if not, um, you can go on to the Alberta Lamb Producers website. So you just want the straight floor, four legs. You just want the, from the front view, you don't wanna see their neck um, bulging down. Um, you want them smooth through the shoulders. And, and you wanna be able to see a bit of width in the back. So if you're looking at them from the rear, you sort of have a Christmas tree look. Okay. <clears throat> and then from the side, what to look for from the side? Again, you're just looking at the, um, the side gives you a good overall balance um, look of the lamb. So to stand back and look, I usually tell my members, just like in judging, if you're in a pen, try and line it up with, with a board um, in the back of the, at the pen or, a, or something that's straight so that you can determine um, if they're, if they're um, nice, long and straight along the top of the animal. And, um, you're just looking to make sure again that they they they're nice and level in the rump area they're um, proportionate um, their legs are proportionate to the rest of their body again looking at the feet and legs to make sure they're nice and straight in the trim middle so you're just looking um, again your side profile gives you the overall balance and and look of your lamb Did that not, is the rear one not showing up properly? Sorry, I'm muted. It did not show up properly, but you can probably tell us what it says. We can read the last of the sentence and that's it. Okay, so so when looking at it from the, from the rear end, um, you just want to make sure that they're they look muscly in the rear, um, and they're deep. Their their legs are deep across across the the width of the animal, and that they have a good angle um, on their hocks or their pasterns. And so, basically, if you look at the animal and when you come up from the bottom of the legs, you see a V there. As, as they put on a bit more weight, the that um, peak sort of starts to disappear, which is, which is what you want because that means that they're filling out. And it's just, um, I always tell my kids when you're looking, if that is really, um, if that peak is, is really defined and, and really quite uh, steep, you might want to steer away from uh, picking that that lamb, as it may it might be an indicator that it's um, it's going to take quite a bit to put uh, weight on and to have it uh, look uh, muscly and deep along the back. So if the you don't want it rounded out. You still want a peak to it, but you don't want the 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 peak to be too steep, if that makes sense to everybody. And so again, when you when you look at the back and you're looking down towards the front of the um, sheep's head, which you can't see in this picture, but if you envision that there's a um, the top, the front of the sheep, you can see its head again. You're looking for that a little bit of a Christmas tree, so it's a um, a little bit wider at the back. Okay.
So that is it for that presentation. And now we're going to start with um, the lamb selection. So hey guys, my name is Emma Janger. I'm here with Tori Anderson, and we're going to go over how to pick a market lamb for your project. Tori, why don't you tell us some of the main features when you're picking a market lamb? So what I usually do is look for their structural correctness. When they're walking <laughs> out in the pasture, look to make sure they're not stiff or limping and make sure they just have a nice stride and look nice. And then once you can get your hands on them, look for a nice like big loin that has room to grow. And then also look for their depth in their body to make sure that they can also grow. <laughs> and then going off of what Tori said, you're also looking for overall the health of the animal. If they're super skinny and limping around, that's not a healthy animal and ideally you wouldn't want to pick that. And then as well, if they're really overweight, <laughs> slow moving, that might be a little bit more of a concern as well. And then I can go over how to um, feel the lamb. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring your hands up right behind the rib. And you're feeling from behind the rib and up right where the hip bone is. That right there is your loin. So you kind of put your hand in and you'll feel kind of a little shelf and you're going to put your hand beside the shelf. And then you'll kind of feel down and then that'll tell you how um, long the loin is on your hand as well as like how wide the loin is. Ideally, longer loin, wider loin is better, but you also got to think about potential and how they're growing. So overall with your market lambs, after a or so, you're going to be looking for your finished weight, your overall conditioning as well, and muscling. Muscling is something that you'll be able to grow as well as finish, so you're not looking for those qualities right now. You can walk your lamb out every day. Okay, so now we're going to go over picking a um, prospect ewe lamb for your flock. So again, just like with your market lambs, you're going to be looking for overall length of loin as well as width of loin, because that goes into the ewe lamb's capacity. So overall, how deep she is, how long she is, how she carries that through her body. And then that'll also um, transition into earlier breeding times. Ideally, she'll catch as a yearling ewe or mature ewe. And then also you're going to be looking for overall soundness of structure. So you're going to be looking at her legs. Are they knock knee? Do they bow out? What are you looking for in that sense? You want to make sure that they're um, relatively straight. They move freely, easily, as well as you want to take a look at teeth. Um, they are growing, so the teeth are going to move and whatnot, but you still want to make sure that the teeth are in line with their bottom teeth in line with their top gum as well as overall femininity yeah. of the ewe lamb. Um, femininity femininity kind of comes into play as more of the fine tuning yeah. when you're in a class, but it is something you want to keep in mind when you're picking your lamb. You want to make sure that she looks feminine, clean cut, especially in and around the face area. Yeah. Sorry, do you want to go over some more of the breeding yeah. prospects? So since the breeding you is a three-year project, you want them to not only last two years, but also be very beautiful yeah. with like either newer breeding ewes or if they already have like a mark and a yearling ewe, you want them to look really similar. So if you have a mature and yearling ewe that's a Suffolk, you should probably go for a Suffolk breeding ewe. So they look uniform and their offspring will hopefully be pretty uniform too. So you can have a nice uniform flock. All right. So now I believe I can introduce Emma who was on the video, and also um, Andy. I don't see Andy. I'm here. Andy's there. So if you kids have any questions for them about what you just seen on the video, I just had a comment that the video was a little glitchy. We're sorry about that. Um, but if you have questions about about your how to pick your lambs uh these are the people to ask so you can like i said just unmute yourself and and say hi and then ask your questions nobody has any questions or can you not hear me we can hear you, Tracy. Okay. I good. have a question. Okay. Perfect. Um, why do the teeth have to be in line? Okay. 
uh, I can uh, handle that one. It, the really important reason why, great question, really important reason why those teeth have to be in line is because if the teeth are undershot or overshot, is, is the technical term they use, if they don't quite line up with the gum, uh, that lamb will have a lot more difficult time um, chewing their food or grazing, especially, um, in, you know, and especially if you're going to be having that as a replacement uh, ewe lamb, uh, that's, you really need to have those teeth line up properly because they're not going to be able to uh, efficiently eat their feed and really keep up with the rest of the flock. So that's a really critical thing. And uh, for a market lamb, it's, it's, I guess, probably not as critical as it would be for a uh, ewe lamb, but it's still important because it, gen it genuinely is an important factor because that is, they will uh, crunch their uh, whole kernels of grain and things like that, and it'll help them digest that uh, feed. Uh, properly as well. Uh, uh, sheep is a very efficient ruminant uh, animal, animal, so it's it's really critical to get that uh, proper teeth alignment for those reasons. What do lambs eat? Yeah, what do lambs eat? Emma, you want to take that one? Yeah, I can. So, um, what you guys will probably be feeding your lambs would be alfalfa, um, a hay mix. Also, personally, like we feed our lambs barley, but I know some people do um, like cracked oat rations. You'll give your lambs grower mix. You could also make grower mix at home or buy it at the store as well. And in the summertime, you know, we'll eat some grass and whatnot, but mostly grower mix, barley, your alfalfa hay kind of stuff. Great question. Then we have some questions in the chat. Are those videos of Tori and the other girl, that would be Emma, uh, available elsewhere? And I believe they are going to be up on the 4-H YouTube channel after this. Is that correct, Tracy? Yeah, that's right. I was just putting that in the chat, but they'll be on the YouTube channel. And then from Trey, when is it okay to change from lamb starter to lamb grower for your market lamb? Well, uh, I think that it's, it's okay to do it once you've got your lamb home. Uh, once you've purchased the lamb, then uh, and you've got it home. It's likely that it's still going to be on starter, but it may already be on grower. Uh, however, I think that the biggest and most important thing is uh, around that 60 pounds, 50 to 60 pounds is quite fine to start switching from lamb starter to grower. But the, the most important thing is the gradual transition. You don't want to just switch from one feed to another. You want to slowly uh, pull back on the, the starter and slowly add more of the grower so that it's a slow transition so that they're not going to have any kind of digestive upset, just on the off chance that there's quite a difference between uh, starter and grower, which there quite often are. Another great question here from Aniston. What are the main characteristics you would be looking for when getting a lamb? Um, I can answer that. That's another great question. So if you're looking for a market lamb, um, the first thing is just when you're walking up to it, overall um, structure of the lamb, how does it walk? Um, is it moving freely? Is it having issues? And then also, once you kind of get that gauge over and you like the way they look, get up into them and then start feeling that loin. You want to feel the length of loin, the width of loin. Cause that's like in your characteristics that you can't change over time. Your muscling you can change over time and the finish you can change over time. So you wanna look for a lamb that has the longest loin, the widest loin um, and those types of like structural features of its legs kind of thing. So those would be like the main one for the market lambs. And then with the ewe lambs also bear in mind the teeth, you wanna make sure the teeth are in line. They do change a bit as they're getting older but you don't want like, if you have your um, bottom teeth here and your gum you don't want a lamb that's kind of out here. So that's when we're talking about like the under and overshooting is when it doesn't line up properly. That's when you really get issues like Andy had mentioned before about them not being able to convert feed energy that well. So overall, like your loin structure, I'd say um, the leg structure as well. And then just some of the more finicky details like the teeth kind of thing would be what I would be looking for as the main, main points I'd say. Okay. A real contentious question. What is the best breed of lamb and gender? And I think the gender would be whatever is uh, your kind of project you're looking to. And lamb would be what is your favorite? What is what you what is your favorite kind of lamb, Emma? 
Do you like a suffix? Do you like a ham? I'm a sucker for suffix. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> Yeah, and I will say that there are there's a lot of breeds to choose from uh, in Alberta. There are a great number of uh, good yeah. market lambs. Uh, market lambs could be Suffolk's, Hamps, uh, Dorset's, Ile de France, Texels, uh, Canadian Arcot. Uh, those are a number of good uh, market lamb. More of the terminal crosses. Some of those are are uh, you know multi multi purpose, but those are some really good breeds. Uh, to look for. And uh, regardless of the breed, you can usually find some some really good market lambs, but those uh, there's about a half a dozen there that you could uh, definitely do well with. Do you think it's okay to keep a sheep in a pen with two mules and two horses? Um, I, I, I think that can work. Uh, if you're talking about a lamb that, you know, that could be a little bit of a challenge. I mean, there those are some pretty large animals, but if you know your mules and horses, I think that that's part of it. Um, I, I, one of the things that jumps to mind that I know that we've that was put in the resource books as well for everybody is if you're putting in uh, minerals that are for mules or horses, you want to really pay attention to what's in those minerals because it's very possible that there are uh, ingredients in those uh, minerals that may not be good for sheep, especially uh, higher copper level. Uh, but as, as far as safety and things, uh, I think that, you, you know, you've got to know your animals, but uh, I, would, I think like manageable. really just get the garden salad and. I think we just had someone hit the unmute button by accident. What weight are you trying to get your lamb up to for market? Um, I'd say that depends on breed as a main thing. Like I know with um, our Suffolk lambs, our finished weight was are closer to 130 pounds. And then you've got some breeds like an Ile de France or um, uh, Katahdin Dorper or um, Arcots, where their finished weights are kind of more 115 pounds, I'd say. So it's really dependent on the breed. And some breeds with their finished weight will be 100 pounds. And other breeds, their finish weight might be up on up on the 130, 140 N2. So I would definitely um, do some research into the breeds you have, even if it's a cross, and just look for where you really want that finish weight. But somewhere in the anywhere from like the 115 to 125, 30 range is usually for most of our crosses and most of the Canadian sheep breeds we have here. I'd say it's somewhere in there. Awesome. If you're doing a market lamb, do the males do better than the females or opposite? So it would be a castrated male lamb, um, a weather. Right. Generally, the uh, the males will do better. Uh, the, the weathers will do better than the females as far as growth rate and uh, muscle uh, disposition as well. Uh, I, however, uh, I've seen a lot of really good uh, ewe lambs do extremely well in market lamb classes. Generally, the males will grow a little bit more, uh, a little bit quicker, and maybe have a little bit more muscle. But, uh, you know, again, uh, depending upon the class and the, and the animal, uh, ewe lambs can do very well. Are haired sheep a popular choice for a 4-H project? I've definitely seen them chosen as hair of um, as projects. I wouldn't say they're as common as your wool breeds, but I've seen people bring in Katahdins or um, Katahdin crosses kind of thing, um, some Dorpers as well. It's it's out there for sure, but I don't. I wouldn't say it's as common as your Suffolk, Dorsets, Charlotte, Camps kind of thing. And I and I would add to that by saying that the uh, Dorpers, I guess, especially of those two breeds, can do very well in a market lamb class. I've seen quite a few. Uh, Dorpers do, you know, compete very well. So, and Katahdins, I've seen pens of three. Katahdins is just a terrific set of pens of three. So, um, yeah, both really good uh, uh, options. Uh, this is a, do you, do you fight if they're in the same pen? Mm -hmm. two more judges. For public speaking, we have three currently, and I was just wondering if anybody um, yeah, uh, ewes can uh, tussle a little bit if they're in the same pen. If uh, it's around breeding time, you'll see enough of that as well. That that can happen, but generally they're uh, 
uh, it's a good thing to have company for sheep. I think that it's important to have that company. Again, it, it, you can have a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, queen of the castle kind of thing uh, happening uh, if there's a flock or if there's a small group. But uh, generally, they're, they're not going to fight to the extent that they're really going to hurt anybody or hurt each other. So uh, it, it's, it, should, it shouldn't be a problem. And then in relation to that, is there a gender that is more tame? Kind of depends on the situation, would you say? Yeah, I don't think it's um, all males are more tame than females or anything like that. It's really just dependent on the lamb itself and their own characteristics, I'd say. Do market lambs have to be ringed for the 4-H project? Corbin and Eva, do you mean, do they have to be castrated or verdizoed? They need to be, if they're a male lamb, they need to be castrated, correct? And so can you guys give some examples of good castration methods? Um, yeah, the, the most common uh, method is, uh, I would say in, in Alberta is uh, the castration ring. That generally should be put on when they're uh, a young new lamb, newborn lamb, within a couple of days of when they're born generally, uh, maybe up to a week, but that's usually the, the method there. There are definitely uh, other methods as well, but that would be, you know, certainly something that, uh, that I would encourage in, if you're raising your own lambs to, to catch that early. Uh, so that would be my my preference on on the uh, process. Would you be able to put sheep with goats? Yep, yeah, you can. I've seen that happen quite a few times. It's they do better with buddies. Um, so yeah, for sure you can put them with goats. I don't think there'd be much of an issue with that. Again, just watching for feed, but. Um, do you have to cut a sheep? I'm thinking this, what she means. Do you have to shear sheep for show day? Generally, what are your thoughts? Uh, yes, uh, most, um, well, clubs will have that uh, requirement to have uh, there's a, a maximum amount of, uh, of wool that a lamb can have on it for for classes so that uh, under under an inch type of thing so that's going to be what's generally what's required uh, and yes they get sheared once a year um, it's it's a tough enough job to do so once a year is enough for the sheep and for the shearer so uh, it all works out so I think there was a question about um, whether you have to cut cut a hair wools a hair sheep's um, I think that's where that question was coming from. Yeah, you, you have to cut a sh hair sheep. Do you have to cut the, on the hair sheep, do you have to cut the hair for show? Didn't have to, no, I wouldn't think so. I didn't think so. Um, no. You covered the, how many times to shear. What do people do with their wool? So Andy, what, where do you take your wool? Well, I'm down in, in the Lethbridge area, so I'm fortunate to have the Canadian Cooperative Wool Growers uh, main store uh, right at Lethbridge. So that's where I take my wool. Unfortunately, right now, it is uh, wool is generally not worth you know a great deal. The lambs are worth a lot more to a producer than, uh, than what they get for their wool, and it's really poor right now for price. But uh, the, uh, there is a market at the Canadian Cooperative Wool Growers, so if people have la uh, have wool that they will have that they're looking to sell, certainly give them a call and they will uh, certainly purchase that from you. Another great question. Uh, we're having a bunch of them tonight, so great work, guys. If this is your first time in 4-H, would you start off with uh, one ewe and one market lamb or one market lamb? And think back to saying everybody needs friends, <laughs> including um, sheep. Yeah, I think uh, I know in my first year, um, my sister and I, we started with breeding use uh, and then kept with that throughout the years. But I think it's kind of up to what workload you want to have. And if you have a market line anyways, it might be worthwhile to get a breeding you because then you have two buddies. You can take care of them and then you've got more to do on show day. 
but it can be stressful having two projects if it's in your first year. So I'd say it's up to your own discretion and what you think you can handle and what you want to take on. Exactly. I think that's a great answer. Um, how much money do you think you can you would spend on your market land when you buy it from a producer for 4-H? Uh, well, that's because of the fact that the the market lamb price, the price for a market lamb is quite high. The last couple of years, especially, you know, the price gets uh, $2.50 a pound to $3 a pound for uh, market lamb. Um, the, the price for that uh, feeder lamb, say a 60 pound lamb, which is quite often in that ballpark, what uh, people are going to be purchasing, uh, that price has varied quite a bit, but I mean, certainly lambs are uh, I heard of prices last year, for example, in that, uh, you know, two, 250, 300 uh, per lamb is what I was hearing in my area. Now, I don't know if that's common across the province, but when when a producer can sell their lamb for 250 to $300, um, they, you know, are reluctant to sell them generally. They want to keep them and put those pounds on themselves. So quite often they'll sell them for a similar to what a market lamb would be. Uh, would sell for so you know hopefully you can find some that are less expensive than that but you know that that might be a ballpark for what price is that you're going to have to pay and again that's it depends upon the producer and uh, a variety of things but uh, that might give you at least a ballpark okay and what is the latest you want your breeding you lamb to be born or whether and if uh, you guys go to your sheep standards uh, you'll see market lamb market sheep projects December fifteenth to April thirtieth. It must be born be born between those dates. So if you ever want to, all you have to do is just Google our four H Alberta sheep standards, and all these little interesting little tidbits are in there to help you make some decisions. Arlene. Yep. Where are you? This is Joan. I oh. am just. Um, commenting on uh, about the hair projects being um, sheared and in our as Arlene alluded to our Alberta 4-H standards if you look at that it does say all hair breeding projects must be shed or shorn at the show committee's discretion at the achievement day events so again if you have some of those questions can be answered directly if you have questions after this by looking at our sheep standards. Okay, thanks Joan. Are sheep colorblind? I believe they have a, a range of colors they can see similar to dogs where it's just like a few of the colors not as the full range as like humans do but for the most part they are I know they're um they don't like red and yellow from what I recall the other two colors that they don't they kind of stray away from but for the most part they can't see as many colors as humans can but they still can see some colors awesome. thank you how old can you breed your you until I guess what is your kind of your cutoff when you start calling your use what age are they? Oh, that, uh, you know, six to seven years old. I know that a lot of producers start, you know, being a little bit more, uh, you know, choosy at that time. I've had use uh, produce until they were 11. Uh, so that's possible. But, you know, that six, seven years old, by the time they're getting eight years old, that that's getting up there sometimes earlier than that, depending upon their teeth and their legs and their udders. There's a lot of different factors that, uh, that will make them, uh, you may have to look at, you know, it makes some tough choices and, and uh, if they're not able to produce long term, then that's, uh, th those are those decisions that every young producer has to make. So. And then we have an interesting question here again. What is the highest amount of lambs that you can ever have? At once. I think it's uh, dependent on breed again I know like your suffix usually they'll have a single or twins I've heard of triplets before um, even quads 
for those breeds, you have um, other breeds, your more uh, motherly breeds can have up to four or six lambs in a litter as well, or a, a litter, I guess. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, can't think of the word right now, but generally your most common um, breeds in and around your Alberta area will be twins usually, maybe triplets and sometimes singles. singles. Uh, oh, Aiden has shared, and Aiden and Lorelai have shared that the world record for lambs born is eight at once from one you. So that's kind of neat. Poor girl. What's the age at the market of the market? I just have to decipher this question. How old are the lambs when they are shipped to market? Maybe that's what they mean. So I guess how many days? typically so typically right now andy well uh you know you usually aim for that uh lambs gaining a pound a day ballpark uh now they're not going to do that over the course of their entire life but if you said that a lamb you know say 120 days uh 130 days ballpark can be anywhere from i suppose 110 to 150 days so that's that's kind of a ballpark of of when they get to market weight really rough is a bottle fed you lamb good for a prospect you for your herd? Do you think? I think if you could pick another one, that would be better, but they can definitely do well. Um, in my experience, our bottle fed lambs tend to not gain as well. Um, they might be a bit weaker and slower growing kind of thing compared to our lambs who aren't bottle fed. Um, I've definitely seen people raise um, bottle-fed lambs as their project use, and they did great. But um, like uh, with my um, flock, the rule of thumb usually is a bottle-fed lamb is a little bit more trouble than it's worth for a flock kind of thing. Oh, this is very interesting again. Okay. Generally, what's the first day you get your sheep and how long do you have them for? So, Emma, what in your district, when was when were your sheep weigh-in dates and when, when was your achievement date? I think our weigh-in dates were in March, I want to say, late February, early March. Um, and then our achievement day would be in, um, in May. So you're not really like you're really having them. I think total we'd get them in we get them January, February, and then we'd have them until June. So you're really looking at six, seven months kind of thing that personally we'd be keep holding on to ours for. And in our district, we have our way in like the first part of April and our show at the end of June. So typically, if you didn't raise the lambs yourself, you'd be picking those lambs up now. And Andy, what did they do down in Lethbridge? Uh, it's generally uh, the weigh day is early April, and then the the achievement day is early to mid June. So that uh, 60, 65 days from the time that uh, the weigh ins happen to the achievement day. So, so we're all kind of in that sixty day range. Is it hard to bottle feed three lambs? Maybe. And how long do you have to bottle feed them for? Well. Um, at the research center where I work at, uh, we've, uh, because of the prolific breeds we have there, we have a lot of uh, orphan lambs and bottle lambs. And the, the rule of thumb there is once they're about 28 days old, then, uh, then they can be weaned. And uh, you have to make sure that they have creep feed in front of them so that they're uh, from, you know, from a week old, they need to have that creep feed in front of them so that they're nibbling on that so, and water as well. So that when they get to that stage of weaning at about about four weeks old, that they'll be able to switch over to to feed, and they they can process that feed and and do well once they've been on it for a week or so. They'll really start doing well. Thank you. How much water do sheep drink in a day? Do you think? Uh, well, I, how much water do they drink in a day? A gallon. I'm going to say ish, a uh, gallon and a half if it's hot. Uh, gallon and a half. Gallons. 
a gallon and a half of water. How many mm -hmm. liters is that for those of us who are metric? <laughs> uh, about seven, eight, I think. Okay, how much food do you have to give a lamb when they come home? When they come at your house, what can the member expect? How much can they expect to be feeding the lamb when they arrive? I guess it depends on your um, method of feeding. I know with um, our place, there's like you have two rules of thumb. You can either give them access to their grower all day, every day kind of thing. So just make sure you have that out or you can do um, measured feedings twice a day is what we would do. And it kind of depends on how many lambs you have, but I want to say we gave ours like a pound a day of food, but they wasted a lot was the other thing. Cause they like to stand in their food because they're lambs. Something in there, I could be off. I don't, Andy, you might want to take this one. Um, once they get to market weight, they're going to be eating probably that five pounds of feed a day in that in that area. Uh, first, when you wean them, I'm I'm going to say, uh, you know, maybe two pounds of creep feed and uh, you know that starter feed and switching them into grower, uh, probably plus some good quality hay to go along with that. They might not even be eating two pounds, honestly, when you start with them at that that weight. Um, it, some of them may be just getting weaned off as well. They're going to be a little bit slow to to really get eating for that first week or so in a new place as well, and a little bit different water, et cetera. But uh, once they get going, they'll they'll really start uh, increasing in the in the feed. You'll go from two pounds a day up to that five pounds a day by market weight, to, uh, and so they'll they'll uh, but they'll do extremely well on uh, on a pelleted feed. And then there's some great information in your manuals too that you guys have. And I think there's some uh, recordings from last year's uh, webinars on feeding on the YouTube channel. Hopefully they're still up there. Here's another great question. Is it better to keep a sheep inside or outside? For sure you need to keep them inside if you're shearing the next couple of days and it's gonna rain. For sure you need to do that. I'd say if you can have them access to outside pastures best, let them roam around, but definitely make sure they have access to some sort of shelter so they can get out of the rain, wind and rain and snow, the elements kind of thing. So if it's, you know, if you have a barn or a calf shelter set up so that they can go inside, that's great. But also it's good to get them outside and walking around, even if it's just you walking them around every day. It's good to be in the sun. We all do better when we're outside. Hmm. What kind of fencing do you guys do you typically need? Uh, fencing. Well, if it's going to be um, in the corral, I mean, you know, the the classic fence would be sort of that one by four uh, fence, so that they uh, they're protected from the wind. Uh, if there's a wind blowing, you see those those fences in feedlots, for example, in southern Alberta, where the wind blows a lot. So that's a good kind of a fence to have. Um, the uh, page wire uh, fence can also work like a pasture fence. It's not ideal for lambs necessarily and for sort of a, uh, a corral situation, a, a board fence would be better. Something that they can't crawl through as well. So it doesn't have to be one by fours. It can be pallets in a small pen and you know around the outside if they're fastened on well, just something so that they're gonna be able to stay in that pen and, and get the feed and water and shelter that they need. That's great. And what kind of, what vaccines should your lambs have while you're raising them? Um, one important thing that, that lambs should get is, and they may have that, and you have to check with whoever you're purchasing your lambs from, they should get an innate way vaccine. That, uh, that is something that they should get. And that they should also have a booster shot. So you'll have to talk to your, um, the person you're purchasing them from. If they're going to get a booster, uh, if they're market lambs, they don't always get a booster. I should point that out. Uh, you know, sometimes that does get, uh, they just get the initial shot because it's very important with any vaccines that you'll, if they're going to market, you'll have to make sure of any withdrawal times on any vaccines that you provide to them. So if you're going to give a vaccine uh, that's getting, and you're getting close to uh, sale day, achievement day, 
that you have to really pay close attention to the any withdrawals on the vaccines and as well as any feeds that you're providing if it's a medicated feed some of them have withdrawals as well so it's really important to read the labels that uh -oh. and understand those things. The Glanvax 6 vaccine is good too. And a show of hands with your little icons or your little reactions. Is there a spot in the record book where you can put in your vaccines and medications? And if you agree, put up your hands that yes, there is. Good job, Joni. Johnny, Issy, Tara, you guys are awesome. You know your record books. <laughs> awesome, guys. Okay, Arlene, we have, I, I do, I pulled up the screen for your sheep show so you can tell the kids about the sheep show. It's There you go. There you go. So mark your calendars, guys, July 16th, the 12th to the 16th of this year in Olds, we're having the 4-H Alberta sheep show once again. And guess what? The requirement for completed record book is waived. Also, there will be a special prize for the champion Southdown ewe lamb. Remember, you don't need a project animal to enter. You can just simply enter the skills class. And for those of you who are bringing your lambs at foot, and if they happen to be a ram lamb, we're having a, something called a ram lamarama. And so that's a jackpot class that you can enter for $5 and you get a bit of the champion pot and a buckle. So remember those things. And also we're gonna be able to offer check-in times for arrival so you guys can get measured and get stalled and get all ready to go when you arrive and we don't have to run around trying to get you measured and be ready to be measured. So just remember all these great little changes for this year and I hope we can see you there. And I want to thank uh, Andy and Emma for the rapid fire round of questions that they answered for us. You guys are awesome. So there is one other thing I can show you guys, just so you know, uh, in the scoop, which has just uh, gone out today, there is a cool thing for sheep members. There's a scholarship or a opportunity for the Alberta from the Alberta Sheep Readers Association. And if you, uh, when you get the scoop and you could use that scholarship, the applications are due April 1st. And um, just another opportunity for, for kids that have been sheep members to, to get a little cash to go to school. So I just wanted to make sure that you, you guys knew about that. <coughs> All right, and um, I, unless Arlene or Joan has anything, that, and uh, like to thank Emma and Andy, but that completes our evening. And thank all of you guys for coming and uh, great turnout for our sheep webinars. So good luck with your projects and hopefully we'll see you at Achievement Day. Hopefully we see you guys in July. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thanks everybody. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.